So you want to launch a podcast. Today, we're going to be talking through our five-step plan to help you get your podcast out in the world, but in a way that is successful for you. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Successful Podcasting Unlocked. I'm your host, Alicia Glotti. I'm the founder of Glotti Media, a full-service podcast management agency where we help business owners launch and maintain lead-generating shows. Today's question is, what do I need to know to launch a successful podcast? Well, today we're going to talk through five steps that we use to launch clients At this point, our company has helped launch over 30 podcasts, including four of my own. So we know what it takes to launch a podcast that works for you. This is a very dialed down version of our free podcast launch workshop. I highly recommend that you go over there, check it out. I go through a lot of these things in more depth, but I also have a lot of resources available to you with that as well. So let's talk through each of these steps. Step one is market research. And we did have an episode all about how to do podcast market research. This is a very underutilized strategy. And maybe this is just because my background's in marketing, but I think that market research is such a an imperative thing when you are launching something new to have that baseline that you can always go back to and say, is this working the way that I want it to? Am I talking to the people that I'm supposed to be talking to? And is this helping me achieve the goals that I set it out to achieve? It also allows you to see where you stack against your competitors. Now, I am not at all saying to look at your competitors and go in depth of what they're doing and then copy that. Not at all. You could do everything exactly the same as someone else and you will still see different results. So what I recommend doing is finding your own voice, using your voice to stand out and be different in your industry and set yourself apart that way. So market research is step one. It is such an important part of this. It's going to allow you to know who you're talking to, where you need to be promoting your podcast, how to structure it in a way that works for you and your listeners, and then setting out that goals. Now, Number two is to create goals. We did have four episodes in a row. We'll make sure we link those in the show notes and the description where we talked through the typical goals that people have for their podcast. Those goals tend to be conversion, impact, growth, or engagement. So based off of that list, what are your goals? And then what are the actions that you need to take in order to achieve those goals within the first six months? of launching your podcast. Now I say six months because in the first three months, you're kind of figuring it out. You're getting a good baseline for what your listenership will be. You're getting an idea of what your completion rates for your episodes are, getting a lot of information. And then that allows you to then stack those three months against the next three months, which is six months total, (laughs) to give you a really good idea of are you growing in the direction that you want to grow? and giving yourself time to actually put effort in. So often I think that we, especially as business owners and content creators, there's a lot of shiny objects (laughs) that tend to get our attention or things that we see or we want to change or shift or, oh, so-and-so did that and I want to do that too. But I think that it's so important that we give ourselves some real time to make a difference towards our goals before we switch it up. So that is step number two. Step number three is to plan out the content. One of the number one reasons why podcasters don't make it past those first 10 or 25 episodes tends to be because one, they don't have their workflows in place. That's important. But second, they don't know what to talk about after that. They get really frustrated, they get really overwhelmed. The content feels like, oh, is anyone even listening? Having a content plan and a very good idea of who you're talking to and what you want to talk about is going to help you have success with your podcast. So I usually recommend that you have at least 10 episodes ready to go at all times that if you 
had a guest cancel, you could sit there and record a solo episode. Have 10 solo episodes ready to go. And I don't mean that they have to be pre-recorded. I just mean that you should have at least an outline or a basic idea of what that episode could look like in case of emergencies. On to step number four, and that is create a launch plan. Now in the workshop, and I'll make sure I link this in the show notes as well, I have a Google Sheet where you put your launch date in at the very top and it will reorganize and give you due dates for each of the actions that are needed throughout the launch process and when they're due by. And that way you can keep a very good timeline of expectations for yourself. I recommend that people take two months to launch a podcast that is really good in that it gives you time to really consider, is this something I really want to do? Let's start creating the content so that way we have something for our audience to listen to. Let's give this our all and really give it our full attention. And giving yourself two months really helps to do that. Also, we're busy people. (laughs) Life happens. Things happen. And if you don't have a good plan in place or you're kind of flying by the seat of your pants with your podcast launch, you're not going to see as much success as you could if you planned it out in a way that is actually going to work for you and for your listeners. That is step number four. Now that also includes promoting your show. And I recommend teasing out your show and not in a something special is coming kind of way. I recommend teasing your show out as I have a podcast launching in two weeks. I cannot wait for you guys to listen to it. Here's where you can go to learn more about the show and really be clear with people of what they can expect with your podcast. Instead of teasing it out as a guess what, people's attention spans are not going to be long enough for them to circle back to you. So give them an action right now to connect with you, to stay in the loop about the podcast, especially if they're podcast listeners and they like your content, then they're more likely to subscribe or follow sooner rather than later. And then step number five is to launch. Get a or show out into the world. I recommend launching with a trailer plus two to three episodes. That way your listeners have something to binge. They've got content that they can go through instead of just that single episode. This is something that we have seen over and over again. And I did do a test with a previous podcast where I released 10 episodes on launch day. And that did not make much of a difference if I had just done three. It ended up being too much content. So I recommend launching with your trailer plus three episodes, maybe five if you're feeling ambitious, but don't feel like you have to do more than three. And then give yourself that bank of content that you can release regularly without having to worry about, oh, I don't know if I'm going to have something for next week or in two weeks. Again, if you want to know more about launching your podcast or you want someone to hold your hand (laughs) through the whole process, please reach out. Connect with me, Alicia Galati. I am on all the social media platforms, but also galatimedia.com is where you can go to learn more about our services as well as a lot of these freebies that I talked about. Until next time, happy podcasting.